Computing giant Dell announcing an expansion of its stock buyback plan, a boost to its profit outlook as well. Joining us right now to talk about all of this and more. Also, the impact of AI on the business across the spectrum and maybe a little bit about what's going on in the markets. Uh, Michael Dell, chairman and CEO of Dell Technologies, is here. Good morning to you. Thank you, Andrew. Great to be with you. Uh, I want to talk about Dell. I want to talk about what's going on in the economy. But I was going to say we were just as as we were coming on that that 10 year looking at that 10 year. What does that say about where we are in the economy and how you think that that's going to impact either Dell, but also more broadly, the whole whole space that you're in right now? Well, you know, I think we, we the, the, obviously the era of free money is over, not necessarily a bad thing. And, you know, the way I think about this is that we're probably back to a more normal rate environment, kind of like we had, you know, maybe in the early 2000s. And. Uh, it's it's fine, you know. <laughs> it's fine, but but fine. I mean, when you look out at your business now, right? Um, and you talk to a, a whole number of investors this week, you're telling them what? Sure, we we talked about uh, you know really our long term framework for our business and our strategy and all the things that we're doing around AI, the edge, and you know the opportunities we have. We had 102 billion dollars in revenue last year. We talked about our long-term framework for EPS growth of 8% or more. We upped our capital allocation right. to share repurchase and dividends to 80% or more free cash flow. We committed to growing the dividend uh, at least 10% a year for the next five years. And, uh, you know, gave some guidance on our revenue growth in our various segments and profitability in the segments. And it was a great meeting to, you know, share kind of the long-term framework of right. how we're continuing to build our business. But how are you feeling about the next 12 months? Because I think all of a sudden, even the last two weeks, there's been sort of, and maybe it's a realization in the bond market, and you can tell, us, tell me the bond market is wrong, but just that the economy is it's going to be a lot tougher over the next 12 months than I think people had anticipated. Are you seeing that? Understand. I, I actually feel a lot better than I did earlier in the year. And part of that is because you know, the last two years were pretty amazing from a demand side. Right. And we, we expected demand was going to come down this year. It's actually been a bit better than we thought, and it's been improving. You know, last quarter we had very strong sequential growth, and the demand signal continues to be pretty robust. So it's really underlied by the ongoing digital transformation. All the challenges that are out there does not take away the need that companies have to continue to transform digitally. And of course, now you've got, you know, all this incredible amount of data and AI fueling another wave of growth that really goes you know, well beyond sort of the traditional boundaries of IT. How much do you think the AI piece of this really is going to change people's forecasts in terms of growth over the next, call it five years? Or how much of this is going to be defensive, meaning it's going to be to maintain market share, but everybody's going to effectively be in the same AI game? I think it will be a little bit of both, right? Some of the gains will be normalized because other firms will, you know, accomplish the same thing. But, you know, you don't want to be the firm that doesn't take advantage of something that is this powerful. And what I'm hearing from our customers, particularly the ones that, you know, the largest ones, the right. ones that have their logos on the buildings in, in, here in Manhattan, they are turning the place upside down to go capture what they see as a kind of 20 to 30 percent productivity efficiency improvement opportunity right. from AI and generative AI. So that's the server business for you. It's servers, it's storage, it's also services. And we believe that AI is coming to your PC, right? Uh, Microsoft has talked about the co-pilot. Right. And increasingly, uh, you know, AI is in small devices. It's at the edge. It's in the retail stores. It's in manufacturing. Everywhere, there's going to be inferencing of information to be able to create better outcomes. And ultimately, all this is about how do we make the world safer, healthier, and more successful in all human endeavors. And that's what technology and AI are really all about. But when you talk to the corporate buyers with their, with their logos on the buildings right now, your sense is that they're, they're nervous about the economy. A lot, a lot of those companies do have debt on their own books. And so the question is, as we, as, as we see rates continue to increase. We're going to have the jobs number at 8.30 this morning. You know, how that plays out. I wouldn't say it's an all clear signal. Right. But the digital transformation, the AI, the security, 
the how do you enable your workforce with the right, right tools? You know, how do you create this intelligent edge? How do you build the next generation networks in terms of communications? Those things have priority right. inside organizations. How, how much do you feel, though, it's going to be an efficiency? I mean, the reason companies are investing in it is because they think it's an efficiency play. This goes to the jobs picture, because we'll talk about that at 830 when we get the jobs number. I don't think it's affecting things just yet. But how do you think about the impact of AI on jobs longer term inside Dell and for your customers? You know, ultimately, I think this is going to result in an expansion of the economy as other waves of technology have. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's obviously imprecise, right? And, and, and any, any technology sort of creates jobs and also destroys some jobs. So, right. uh, again, you know, all this is about how do we augment human capability and make, you know, all... Mm -hmm you know, of, of, of uh, humanity more successful. And ultimately, I think that's, that's going to that's gonna grow the but economy. But do you sit around in, in, you know, when you think about planning, hiring plans for the next year, two years out, or even when you're selling some of these products to your clients, are they saying, you know what, if we buy these products, if we buy these services from you, Michael, the good news for us is that we're actually going to be able to slow our hiring plans in the future. Or, I mean? or, or dedicate more yeah. of the freed up capital and resources toward new growth initiatives. And it'll be some of both. And how, it, it'll be some of both. Is that, this, is that similar for you too? Sure. What, where do you see the opportunity in, in that regard then? You know, it, it, it's sort of this continual process of, I, I'm, I'm going to take you back to the mid 1990s, okay. right? And this thing called the internet came right. along, right? <laughs> and it's like, wow, you mean I don't have to call on the phone to order my computer? I can go online, right? And, you know, our, our sales force was like, oh, what's going to happen? Well, it turns out the sales force right. got to add a lot more value and they became more productive. And, and you know, it, now the company's obviously a lot larger. Sales force right. is a lot larger. And so I think you'll see, again, productivity enabling people to, to have more fulfilling jobs, to do more right. important work, and solve more important problems.